Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about INFJ body language. And yeah, I know, body language, total pseudoscience, right? At the same time, more than 107,000 of you guys have tuned in to watch my videos on body language. So maybe not, maybe you guys are actually interested in this stuff. Maybe you guys think there are some patterns. And I think so too. Uh, let me be honest with you, I think so too. I think there are secrets in our expressions and in our body language and I don't think our smiles and our gaze and our eyes are there just for show. I believe they are there to help us guide and process information. How we react, how we respond, how we generate energy and warmth and passion, what makes us feel good, what posture we use to feel confident, those things say a lot about our personality and our personality type in particular. INFJs have a set of unique signals and a home state you want to look for. A home state they will radiate the most when they are in flow. Now, when I type people, I use body language as a means to predict your personality type. Body language, as well as how you test and how you assess yourself on a personality test. And also, beyond that, how you yourself explain yourself as to feeling or thinking or processing information. I use all these three means to confirm your personality type and it's only when these three things go together that we can talk truly about having a match, a confirmed personality for, your, for you as a person, an individual. So INFJs, what are their unique works? First let me break down some of the key things I've noticed. From everything from a monologuing style of communication, a slowly increasing voice pattern, and a style of speaking which is focused and direct. INFJs have warm and swaying gestures, they have fluid wrist movements, they have fluid thinking or processing styles, they have an inside outwards energy, they have a directing judging energy. Yes, they emanate focus, they emanate calm and stability, and they emanate warmth and openness. These are all things to look for when trying to type an INFJ. If they don't have these things, they're probably not INFJ. So, an INFJ in flow has a set of four cognitive functions you can spot in a flow state. First, introverted intuition. Second, introverted feeling. Third, intuitive judging. Fourth, feeling judging. So these things all have to be present if you're an INFJ. But let's first start with introverted judging. Yeah, introverted judging is when you hold your head up high, generating energy, generating thought, generating perspective, and then direct this energy outwards to other people through communication or through projects or through action. INFJs are directive types, that means they are focused, they channel their energy towards one particular direction, rather than adaptably picking up energies from all around them and surfing with their environment. They stay and retain focus. Yes, in a home state, when generating energy and stability and confidence, they are expressing themselves to other people. When lacking in confidence, or when shaken or unsettled, they are distracted by information. They appear shaken up or thrown off course. They appear restless or they appear jumpy, as nervous. Yeah, that's when their energy is pushed towards them rather than expressed outwards. INFJs, when listening, when taking in information, and when adaptably adjusting to different things that happen around them, appear shaken, restless, and distracted rather than confident or energetic. That means it's not their home state, it's not how they generate energy and it says a lot about their processing style. They need to first go in and then go out, not first go out and then take in. So the INFJ begins by moving in that energy flow of putting out and then seeing how people react and respond to what is put out and then processing and then putting out again. That's INFJ native state expression and body language. So INFJs tend to demonstrate warmth, dreaminess, thoughtfulness, contemplativity. Being intuitive and feeling types, what you will see is this uh, amiable, spiritual expression, openness, 
rather than uh, factual or evidence-based or concrete reasoning styles. INFJs value warmth and amiable conditions. They prefer friendliness over conflict or discord. They prefer agreement rather than competition. What that means is INFJs, they fall into these sets of unhealthy behaviors, as in when they are at their worst, they can appear speculative, they can appear to have their head in their clouds, they can appear to be lost in thought, they can appear to be unserious. They can appear to be weak-minded, they can appear to be drifty, they can be appear, appear to be untested or vague. INFJs generate energy when they dream off and value and go into and ask themselves what is meaningful. INFJs show the most stress when they wake up and when they try to explain themselves and what they are doing. And it's when you notice and tell the difference between these activities, you can also start to distinguish the difference between intuition and feeling and sensing and thinking. Thinking as in reasoning and explaining an activity, feeling as valuing and appreciating or thinking about what you like or dislike about a situation. Intuition as dreaming off or imagining or building up an idea about something or getting excited or enthusiastic about a prospect. Sensing as gaining evidence for something, confirming something, making sure something is right, making something real and concrete, turning an action, turning an idea into an action, something we do rather than think about doing. INFJ introverted intuition in flow tends to generate this contemplative squint. It appears as a form of thousand yard stare. The INFJ's gaze appears unfixed. Rather than focusing on a particular detail or a particular aspect, INFJs look at you as if they are looking straight through you, past you, far off into the distance. It can be as if, what if they, what are they actually looking at? Yeah, that's something I get all the time when I'm interacting with people. People are like, what are you looking at? <laughs> What's wrong? What's happening? You know, and that's when I've dazed off and I've gone into NI Wonderland. INFJs can appear deep underwater when they are looking at something. They can appear as if they are not here, as if they are inattentive, as if they are lost, as if they are in somewhere else, a twilight zone of sorts. And you can see introverted intuition also in the gestures of, uh, you know, that kind of thoughtful, fluid, wrist-pulling motion. You, you know, when you're pulling information from inside or trying to ask yourself a question or trying to reason about something, this particular gesture is so NI, and I see it in INFJs and INTJs and INFPs and INTPs all the time, and it's just so distinct, you can barely miss it. So when an INFJ goes into extroverted sensing then, instead they appear overwhelmed, dissatisfied, drained. Yes, when they are paying attention to the world around them and they're forced to focus or to take in what's happening around them, they appear overwhelmed, they appear to be taking in and they appear to be full and they fill up very quickly. As in, it's hard, they listen but they, it's hard for them to take in and they feel full while they are taking in the information. They feel like they are trying to squeeze something in that they cannot fit in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, INFJs are not said to be lead consumer gather types. No, they're said to be lead organized. That means they have to, they have a full system inside. They have the, all the information they need. And to take in information, it's as if we have to cram in the information. We have to force it in ourselves. We have to make room for it. We have to process it and make sure there is a space somewhere. We have to find out where to put the information. We cannot simply just take it in. And you see that when we listen. It's not that we are not that we don't want to listen. It's that if we listen and if we have to take in what you say, we have to also make room for it. And that's very difficult. Beyond that, INFJs manifest a cunning gaze. And what I often look for is this kind of U, this yay, double yay shaped expression. You know, it starts here with focus. It starts here with the the nose muscles being relaxed and it goes leaks round into the cheeks 
that gives them this cunning gaze of this relaxed cunning gaze this uh, idea this image that i know what's going to happen i know what's going on infjs they look as if they always know what's going on and they look as if they always know what's going to happen next yeah infjs appear to be cunning predicting speculative they appear to be gamblers going in with a set goal in mind so often it's that other people look to infjs because they want to figure out what's going to happen next. When they look at an INFJ, they feel reassured because, oh, it looks like the INFJ knows what's going on. It might be total chaos, but the INFJ seems to know what's going to happen next. And, you know, that's very reassuring. That's That means you can relax. And that means, yeah, I don't have to take this seriously because the INFJ knows and it's going to take care of it and it's going to fix it. Um, INFJs, we fall into this directed scanning, this... Uh, Moving our head around, but keeping our eyes relatively fixed. We move our head around, scanning around us, but our eyes remain relatively fixed. That means it appears as if our eyes lead our face. Our eyes lead our expressions. It's our eyes that lead <laughs> everything we do. And there's another thing here that's really interesting to look for, and that's the eye wandering. When INFJs are talking, their eyes can start wandering slowly, pre predictably, in one particular direction, or as if there is something there, wait, maybe there, you know. It's that sense where other people start looking around you as well. They're like, what is he looking at? And they try to look and follow your eyes, and it's like, there's nothing there, what is he looking at? And that's that eye wandering is quite uh, intriguing, to say the least, about INFJs and INTJs. For, and, for that matter, ENFJs and ENTJs. INFJs have a storyteller voice, and that's why our voice tends to slowly escalate as if we have a set destination we're headed towards. This moving, slowly built up way of talking, that's uh, native to INFJs, and it's when you talk like this that you can know that, yeah, you, this person is focused, this person is mentally disciplined, they are compartmentalizing and organizing all their thoughts, everything is and has to go in a certain direction, everything has to be thrown or directed, rather than put out there freely or chaotically. And that should be said about introverted intuition as well. Introverted intuition is what gives an INFJ this thoughtful speech style. Thoughtful, contemplative. When we talk, it sounds like we are lost while we are talking. We are trying to figure it out while we are talking. We are never sure of anything. We don't speak from introverted sensing certainty. We speak from uncertainty and questions and philosophy. Everything we say is a matter of a question, a philosophical thought a pondering thing that we are still ruminating, ruminating on. And so we never appear to be sure of anything. But we also appear like we are always thinking about something, always processing something. Moving on to introverted feeling, another of the INFJ's flow functions. Introverted feeling is what gives the INFJ this sensitive listening expression. When INFJs talk, we have introspective, empathetic voices. We are permanently processing and valuing and putting value into every word we choose. We, every word we choose appears to be meant to be just there. Everything is valued while it is spoken. You know, if INTJs speak without valuing what they say, INFJs speak with value in what they say. So an INTJ's words are just words, but for an INFJ, every word has a meaning and an intention. An intention leading with intention is very INFJ. Leading with a purpose or some kind of value in every show's or choice word is important to the INFJ. Speaking with value rather than choosing your voice carelessly. It's also because of this INFJs can appear to be a little bit weak-minded. While ENTPs or ESTJs speak with certainty and make things clear and to put things very strongly into words and means seem to be very serious about what they say, INFJs seem a bit drifty and sensitive and a bit vague and a bit open-ended. So it's a bit difficult to take an INFJ seriously. It's a bit difficult to take their words with the stature and power that an ENTJ would put into it. So... 
INFJs speak from not wanting to assert themselves, from wanting to keep the peace, from wanting to mediate and to keep things good and to keep everyone happy. While I ENTJ is okay with speaking a bit strongly and firmly on a matter and a bit more frankly. The ENTJ is not afraid to mince words or to upset some people's feelings if it will get the situation forward. But the INFJ chooses all their words carefully because what if one single word could make somebody else feel bad or could rub people off? So an INFJ is always thinking about these things. This is also why we have to look at feeling judging. Feeling judging is what gives an INFJ this persuasive speech style. While INFJs don't appear to put power into their words or don't seem to push their words or uh, while INFJs are not blunt communicators, INFJs are still passionate communicators. What that means is we speak with kindness and with empathy and with caring. And that's also what makes us a little bit easy to listen to. You know, it's easy to listen to an INFJ when they talk because their words are easy to take in. INFJs speak with awareness of the listener. That means we shape our words and our sentences with awareness of who we are talking to. We know what not to say. We know how to say something to make it understood by other people. We choose culturally what expressions to pick and how to act and how to express ourselves to convince another person. So we look at these things and we have these kind of swaying body language gestures. These kinds of synchronized finger movements, these kind of synchronized wrist movements are so FJ, so uniquely FJ, they cannot be missed. INFJs talk while swaying their audience while talking. And that's uh, very INFJ and very ENFJ and very ESFJ and very ISFJ. It's also because of this style that INFJs can appear a bit imprecise, a bit goofy, a bit silly, a bit, uh, you know, like we're just throwing things out there, like we're just using words, like our words have no meaning at all, like it's just some kind of spell. <laughs> INFJs talk as if they're throwing out a spell or if they're just saying something because it sounds nice. While of course our words might have a logic or rationale behind it, it's not the first thing anybody will pick up on. So people will assume perhaps it is simply word soup and perhaps it has no meaning at all. But it does. It does have meaning and it does have a purpose and otherwise it would not have been said. Okay, maybe not all the time. Sometimes it's just word soup. So I'm going to end with some key questions here. Which of these signals I mentioned in this video speak to you the most? Have you noticed anything of this in your own videos or in your own expressions or perhaps in an INFJ friend or family member? Have you noticed or talked about these signals with your friends or have anybody else noticed this in you? Has anybody else been surprised by your gaze or your drifting style or your inattentiveness or... Has anybody noticed uh, your persuasive communication style? Has anybody noticed your warm and friendly smile and how FJ you are? Has anybody seen how sensitive you are and when you listen, how it seems like your mouth is open while you listen as if you are openly taking in and listening to and reflecting on what is said to you? Has anybody noticed that uh, you put them at ease just by your body language and how you talk and how you express yourself and convey yourself? When I'm with other people, other people always say I look like the pillar of calm. I always appear thoughtful. I always appear to be a bit lost in thought. But I also always appear like I know what's going on. And people always come to me because they know they can trust on me. I have that IJ style of leadership. You know, when you appear to be competent and appear to be controlled and appear to be composed. And so other people will give you stuff and will let you hold on to stuff and will throw responsibilities at you. For the better or worse, I believe I have a very INFJ body language and I can see this body language in other INFJs as well. 
but I don't believe these body language quirks can be shrugged up as, uh, you know, physical characteristics. I don't think there are, is an INFJ physical characteristic. I don't think INFJs have to look alike. I think INFJs can have very different features, nose sizes, cheekbones, eyes, they can have different colors, they can have different uh, levels of uh, texture in the face, they can have different levels of firmness or softness to their expressions. But the thing that remains relatively consistent is how we talk, how we smile, how we look at another person, how we think, how we reflect, how we process things. Yeah, those things are what make us INFJ. Those things are all a part of that INFJ soup that you've got there. And uh, now this analogy makes me hungry. So I'm going to end this video right there. Thanks everyone for watching. And if you agree with these signals, make sure to like, share and subscribe to more content on INFJs and on body language. And let me know, of course, in the comments which type I should do next and what kind of body language you feel is the most distinct in you as an INFJ. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.